Guess what? All you, the best thing you have is to know a little bit of Bible. The problem is some of us know too much Bible. And so we constipated. We can't get it out. Somebody say, get it out. <laughs> Challenge for us. Because nobody knows your story oh, like yeah. you know your story. You ought to be able to tell somebody, I wouldn't be here right now. Yes, if yeah. it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Except for Jesus Christ came in and saved me. Father, you ought to be able to tell somebody that if it was not for Jesus Christ in my life, because some of y'all got folk y'all grew up with, folk in your hood, on your street, didn't make it. You can say, I never would have made it. I wish I had a few believers in the house today. Because you start looking back over your life and you start realizing that God's hand was on your life you. and the favor of God was moving on your behalf, you ought to be able to tell somebody, listen, and if it ain't did nothing for nobody else, I know what it did for me. So you've got to, got to take advantage of the opportunity to tell somebody. The other thing is that you've got to enlist the folk. Look, look at this. It says the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. We've got to get folk involved. We've got to train you with some resources. Say, hey, here's some things that will help you. Guess what? We're having home Bible studies all over the city oh, yeah. of Oklahoma City right now. We're having them in every area of the city. There's one close to you. And if it's not close to you on the night that you need it to be close to you, then we got others that are all over the city that are happening simultaneously around our city every night during the week. Yeah. But we're not just having that just to be having it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. What we're doing is trying to equip us so that we would not only be intimate and personal with those who are in a small group setting, and, but we would also have an opportunity for us also to get the tools and the resources so that we would know how to share the gospel with somebody else. Listen, Elton Trueblood says this. He says that we have projected the idea that the church is a group of people streaming to a shrine or a temple to make up an audience for a speaker. He says the church should be full of laborers and seldom are they moved to action. In other words, he's challenging you and me for us to decide that we're going to do more than just show up on Sunday. But that we're going to give our lives to tell somebody else about the saving power of Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, you know, it's interesting because when I look at the folk that Jesus surrounded himself with, I never would have fooled with these folk. <laughs> None of them graduated from the University of Jerusalem. None of them were biblical scholars. None of them needed to know all of the scriptures. I mean, it was some bad actors. I mean, it was Paul Fisher. A tax collector working for the IRS. Don't nobody like them. <laughs> One zealot. I mean, y'all seen fishermen? I ain't never smelled a fisherman coming back from fishing smelling good. Y'all missing it. <laughs> they were just 12 ordinary folk. They were just ordinary people like you and like me. Wasn't nothing special about them, extraordinary about them, but they did know something about an extraordinary God that could save them and could save somebody else. So we're not just here to make up an audience for a speaker, but you and I, 
are called by God, the church is called by God to go out and tell a dying world about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. One last thing he says, that you and I got to infiltrate the world. We must get out of the church. It says that those 12 in chapter 10 and verse 5, it says those 12 that surrounded Jesus, he said they sends them out to the cities and the synagogues and the villages and the highways and byways and they begin to tell others about Jesus Christ. God has made too big of investment in you for you to hide your light. Somebody look at your neighbor, high five and tell them, don't hide your light. God has made too big of investment in you for you not to tell somebody about what he did for you. He wants you to tell somebody. He wants you to tell somebody about what he did for you. It's kind of interesting to note as you begin to look at the life of Jesus that Jesus spent most of his time on the outside. You and I spend most of our time on the inside. Tell somebody, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. See, the truth about it is, is that for you and for me, we got to decide that we're going to make a difference in somebody's life. And so we got to get out of here in order for us to do that. When you look at Jesus' life, he spent time on the outside. He himself was born in a manger next to sheep and goats and oxen. Guess what? That was on the outside, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. When he did his first miracle, it was at a wedding feast, and that was on the outside. When he was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River, that was on the outside. When he preached his sermon on the mount, said, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall see God. That was on the outside. When he fed 5,000 mm, yeah. with two fish and five loaves of bread, he yeah. set them down on the hillside and he fed them on the hillside. Oh, that was on the outside. Guess what? He was on the outside. Yeah. 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 So when they put him in a borrowed tomb, oh, yeah. he wasn't used to being on the inside. Yeah. 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 Yep, he said, I got to get up out of here. He got up. Yeah. He went on a taxi cloud back to heaven and glory. And guess what? When he comes back again, he won't come back inside the church. But he'll stand up in the clouds and he'll bring yeah. the trump of God. Yes, sir. And every one of us, the dead in Christ, shall rise first. Because he ain't used to being on the inside. He is ready for us to get on the outside. Tell somebody, I got to get out of here. And tell somebody about Jesus Christ. If you'll do that, then he'll honor it. He'll honor it. You can't make somebody except Jesus Christ. All you can do is share. I wish I had some Amen. the Holy Spirit to rest. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, today, you're challenging us as your people to share our faith. Yes, Lord. And today, the challenge has gone forth. And we, your people, shall respond. Today, God, we're going to tell somebody about what you did for us. Yes. And allow your Holy Spirit to work yeah, yeah. and to be at work. Yes. And Father, you'll get the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Today is your opportunity for you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you've never done that, then it's an opportunity for you to do that one today. If you're here today and maybe you just need encouragement, it's a good chance for you to do that one today. We've got people who will pray for you, who will lift you up. You've got a church family who will be praying for you 